Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Indie Horror Speedruns Podcast. I'm your host, Zom Slays. Welcome on in, my friends. This is episode 8, and this is a very special episode. I'm here with uh, my two co-hosts, uh, Vac to my left, and Pleasantly GG down below. And below me is our very special guest, Maxi Lobes. Welcome, Maxi. How are you, my friend? Hello, hello. I'm good, I'm good. Good to be here. Let's fucking get it, baby. I love to hear that um so how are how are we doing man how's everybody's weekend vac uh how are you i've i've been good uh, not much to say on that though love that um plez you've been on quite the grind uh how's your week been my friend it's been really good praying <laughs> that this game doesn't crash on me it's a new game called skur rituals it's like a somewhat of a cod zombies knockoff and Kind of has some bugs and stuff. It crashes for a lot of people, but luckily my game's been going for... I think I've had it on for almost three and a half days now. Insane. 27 hours into a game, so... So insane. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're good. We're chilling. I uh, hope everybody's well. Um, it's Friday. We're hanging out. But we have a very special episode for you guys today. So, um, again, welcome, Maxi. Um, we're about to dive into uh, a very special story here. A very, very special story. So um, let's just keep it light. Start off small. Uh, Maxi, how old are you and where are you from? Uh, I am now 31, turning to dust slowly but surely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was born in actually England. I was born in London, but my family was like, hey, we got to go uh, to the States. And I was like, all right, take me with. So, That's, um, wow. And I was like five, so um, I didn't really have much of a choice. But yeah, I moved <laughs> to Southern California, and that's where I've been since. Wow. That's, that's really crazy. So do you have any memories of living overseas? Very little. Yeah. Very, very little. Like, when I, when I try to remember, like, the, the houses that I lived in in England, I can only remember one of my bedrooms and one of my kitchens, and that's it. Wow. That's so crazy. Yeah, I was very curious about that. Yeah. I was very, very curious about that. Um, so that's awesome. How was growing up in California for you? Um, what was that like? Um, uh, eh. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I suppose, I suppose, like, Southern California is expensive. I yes. definitely think that I was very lucky to, like, grow up here, um, you know? Uh, my parents were pretty well off, and they, you know, supplied me with what I needed, right? Uh, to keep myself entertained. Lots of video games. I'll tell you that much. They were definitely, uh, supplying that hobby. Yep. Uh, but I think around like you know middle school, high school, I I kind of feel like that's when I started to the the whole Southern California like Los Angeles thing started to take effect. You know. Yes. Um, yes. You know, became a stoner. Yeah. Uh got into music and hated all my teachers <laughs> the west coast lifestyle like, <laughs> it's cra it was crazy and uh but like i feel like my parents kind of knew that that was happening and they kept me very grounded out of high school and i kind of just pursued music and it didn't work out and they were like all right well if there's something else you want to do like like we're here for you we got you and i was like i want to try this streaming thing out and so I kind of feel like that's, you know, just just growing up, I was very lucky. I had very good parents. They, that's awesome. Yeah, they enjoyed my hobbies as much as I did and wanted to see me pursue them. So, wow. Yeah, I love yeah, that. No, that's awesome. For Southern California, definitely. Yeah, that's definitely why I turned into a stoner gamer to who love tool and progressive metal and shit. And, You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, uh, I definitely want to dive into that a bit more for sure. Um, So. Wow, you, you you totally caught me off guard with the whole parents thing, man. Uh, it's it's not often that you get to hear that, man. Like, usually everybody's come up stories like, you know, my parents hated me, never supported me, kicked out at 16, you know what I mean? This, that, and the third. So that's awesome to hear. That's, that's like, really, really awesome to hear. Um, so, you mentioned gaming. Um, when did that actually start for you? Like, what was the very first video game memory you have? Like, what was the first games you played, and how did that come about for you? Um... So my first console was a PlayStation 1. Legendary. Uh, my parents, you know, didn't really know a whole lot about gaming, but they were like, you know, he'll probably like it. Let's get him some stuff. So yeah. they got me a PS1 with Crash Bandicoot, Street Fighter Alpha 2, 
the Hercules video game, and Batman Forever, the arcade game. Oh. And, you know, little did they know, these four games are actually pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, so I had a lot of fun, and that's kind of where it all started. From that point on, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm all in. I'm getting games as often as, as they'll let me. That's so sick. That is so sick. So um, how old were you at that point? Five. Wow. Okay, yeah, so this really, was like really young. super yeah. early. Yeah, so you've been a grinder. Okay, that's awesome. Um, what kind of games were you grinding in your teen years and into your early 20s? Uh, so, okay. Xbox 360, Xbox Live. Yep. We, we were all in that era. Definitely. So, Definitely. Uh, my preferred games were Gears of War. I would grind the shit out of the multiplayer of Gears of War. Yes. Um, yes. And, you know, as much, you know, even though I was a gamer before and I loved all my single player stuff, like I did spend a lot of time on multiplayer. I did play COD. Yep. I, you know, I was terrible at Halo. Oh. Terrible at it. That's why I stick to Gears a lot. I yep. like that. I like that more. Um, played World of Warcraft and RuneScape. Uh, yeah, just lots of good stuff um, in terms of multiplayer, because, you know, we all we all were there for the kind of the renaissance of it all yeah um, yeah oh my god yeah definitely golden era yeah yeah really yep. that's awesome so, man. yeah that's 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 a lot of the grinding stuff for you know my my late teens right early years um so doing a little bit of research uh i did find out about your early speedrun days so i was kind of curious about that and um tell us the story about how you started speedrunning for those who don't know so 2015 january uh, like i got super sick because of wisdom teeth surgery like i wasn't brutal. taking care of myself so brutal and uh so i got an infection and i was like bedridden for like three weeks i was like okay what am i gonna do in bed for three weeks mm. obviously play games but i was kind of sick of everything that i was playing so i was like all right let's go back let's go back to some old ones and i did go back to the old ones i played i played resident evil 4 again and I was like, hmm, I'm going to look up some stuff. Is there anything I don't know about this game? So went to the YouTubes, found the Ditman glitch. And I was like, what is that? Oh, like, man. You, oh, my God. You can go super fast with, with the striker. What is this? And then all the recommended videos for the Ditman glitch were speedruns. I'm like, what is a speedrun? What even is this? Clicked on wow. that. And I was like, hey, you play games fast. I was like, this is kind of cool. I, I could try this out. But the recommended videos for that were games done quick. I was like, OK, uh. so there's like a whole central hub for this hobby. And I watched like five or six runs. Like I watched like a bunch of weird ones, um, a couple of Resident Evil runs, uh, Super Metroid, uh, SM64, like the kind of the usual suspects. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the Twitch link or in the link for for YouTube in the description was Twitch. And I was like, OK, what is Twitch? This is all in like the span of one week. I was like, OK, what is Twitch? Went on there, found all this crazy stuff. And like, that's kind of where my interest really peaked is when I found people speedrunning like every kind of game on Twitch mm -hmm. and having all of the archived YouTube videos of games done quick. Like there was a lot of content to to eat up in early 2015 by that point so i was pretty intrigued yeah so you just fell down the rabbit hole there huh wow oh yeah okay that's awesome so you mentioned you found twitch at the same time so i assume you weren't streaming at the time right no yeah i had no idea what what that was wow 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 that's awesome so it was kind of like a double whammy for you okay so the interest peaked when did you eventually start grinding? Was Resident Evil the first game you initially went to? I mean, it was, right? Because you started small. But after Resident Evil, did you kind of drift into other games as well? So Resident Evil 4, like, I wanted to do speedruns for it, but I wasn't really super committed yet. So I did ILs, like mm -hmm. chapter, individual chapter speedruns. And I was like, okay, like, I'm enjoying this. But also, this game is, like, really hard. Even in New Game Plus, the category that I picked, like, the New Game Plus strats aren't easy. Right. Um, there's, like, a lot of inputs, and you gotta use Ditman constantly, and, you know, there's skips and tricks and stuff. And I was like, okay, maybe I won't do full game of this yet. I'll, you know, I'll do something more cozy. So I chose Silent Hill 2. Mm. That was my first full game, like, speedruns. Um, and that was around June of the same year. 
So it took me a few months to really like, you know, pick it up, especially because sure. like I wanted to try streaming out as well. So it took me a while to like, you know, get my get my PC up and uh, you know, get a capture card because I was playing console stuff. So right. Um, so yeah, no, around June, yeah, I did Silent Hill two full game, and that was like my first grind was that game right there on console. Wow. It was it was um it was awesome. It I look back at those days like very fondly. Um obviously as time progresses, speed games get very different and sure. Silent Hill 2 is no exception. Right. And has changed a ton. So uh yeah, I look back at those days, I'm like, yeah, that was that was a good place to start. I'm happy I did that. Wow, that is so cool. That is such a cool story, man. Um so you were all in. You you eventually just just dove in, but to kind of take a quick Hit stop here before we continue on your speedrun journey. Let's talk a little bit about Twitch and eventually YouTube. So, when did you initially start streaming at this point? Because 2015, when did you actually start your channel? Uh, that that was June, um, and it was not even speedrunning at first because I wanted to just kind of test to see how stream was. Right. So I played Fallout New Vegas. Awesome, that's cool. And I kind of just kind of just sat there and yeah. just streamed it but just played the game like i normally would because fallout is the type of game where you can kind of you know you can kind of talk as as you are the player because yep. there's no dialogue for the player so you get to talk as the player so there's actually somewhat you know you're engaging yourself in the game and that's good for stream yeah so oh, yeah. uh Mm -hmm. So I started with that. Everybody starts with no viewers. That's how it goes. For sure. I did that for about five days. And over the course of those five days, I did have just people kind of drift in and out. Um, Probably because I was playing Fallout, and that's kind of like a, a niche game. Maybe people were looking for it. So that was, you know, that was fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. But then after a couple of weeks, I was like, okay, I actually have a few people now who are interested in watching me. I'm going to play Silent Hill 2, and I'm going to start those runs. And I think that's really where Twitch for me started to click, because not only was speedrunning, like, obviously today speedrunning is humongous, but yeah. back, in 20, back in 2015, it wasn't as big. Hmm. And so speedrunning content was very much so sought after um, by, you know, a smaller group of people on Twitch, and there was a lot of communities that were kind of interwoven because of that so i had people that were just general speedrun watchers whether it was super mario sunshine or you know glover yeah uh, you know, right I would, have, I would have them in chat and it's like very interesting to uh it was it was very interesting to have that and so silent hill 2 my viewership basically shot up um quite a bit and i was like huh okay yeah. that's great that's awesome i don't know what this means but let's just keep going so yep. I, I kept it up um obviously like met tons of people at, in the speedrunning community and i attended agdq uh 2016 wow what what so that is so that is like mm. so twitch really really went very fast for me right i was able to i was able to grow an audience i was able to you know even attend AGDQ with the help of people funding it and like meet everybody that I had basically talked to for almost a year now. Uh, and yeah, it was very life changing. Yeah, no, that is so cool. So you just got your come up like super quick, super, super yeah, quick. I was, I was very, very lucky. That's um, awesome. And I, I have to say like Twitch, Twitch back in those, those days were, it was more likely for that to happen if you were streaming niche content, especially something like speedrunning a horror game. So it's like no question. Yeah, I so I got super super lucky, and I just think I was I was there at the right time. It was for the sure. right place at the right time. Lightning in a bottle, definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay, so Twitch became a success. You eventually got partnered and things like that, but it doesn't stop there. The content doesn't stop there. We all know that. Your YouTube channel is also very successful as well. So how did that start out for you? Obviously, you didn't just want to upload gameplays and things like that. So how did your YouTube content grind kind of start? That was that was a weird one because mm. like I, I had always I had always wanted to have a YouTube. Yeah, but it was kind of hard to justify just throwing playthroughs and streams up on YouTube. Right. 
obviously as an archive it's it's great and i wish i had done an archive channel earlier yeah like that's definitely one <clears throat> content creation regret right there for me for sure um but in terms of like youtube specific content stuff that you watch there that you could never see on stream yeah i think i think that is kind of like 20 2018 2019 is when i started to really want to do that stuff um but i i mean it's 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 so hard to sit there and like you know begin the how to edit process you know learning how to edit even at like a basic level can be really annoying and tedious absolutely uh, it takes a lot of time and i didn't really have that much time yeah so i had to hire an editor and <clears throat> you know lo and behold you know youtube had new people finding me and i was like okay so this is it's it's slow but surely you know yeah it it's works. a rough grind you, yeah the youtube algorithm it works it's just slow mm -hmm. so um i was like okay so now that i'm attracting some attention like i should probably try to make a big video like what if i you know what if i made a video that really hit the algorithm and that would that would help a lot right you know and you know looking back on it i don't think the video that really got views was the video that should have gotten views it was the uh developers killed back for blood video man um, see yeah. we that was yes the first yep. one yes I saw too. yes yeah. yeah yes so that one it was like it was really cool to see that happen but i was like oh no it had to be that <laughs> oh, one it's no. all it's it's it had it's, to be that one. Oh. It, you know content um, is funny like that it's it's just like that with music too like it, it's always the song that you don't really like that just pops off you know it's it's, it's yeah. very weird like that people love the downfall and the drama and they, they they love watching things fail so yeah. That's yeah. Always, yeah so that that was the first video that was like huge interaction like lots of comments people going crazy basically at each other's throats over back for blood and yeah like, all right this is all happening in my video so all right <laughs> that cool yeah <laughs> sure um definitely yeah youtube youtube's hard um but when you actually have like a video you're proud of that does really well like it feels very good like how resident evil 7 changed speedrunning bit of a clickbait title but that video it, did really well listen though it's good um, content it's such good content that's why it like i feel like clickbait titles are okay if the content is actually good yeah yeah you I know what i mean justifies it. yeah you know it's it's got to be at least good and that and that was totally that case for me at least as a viewer right like that was that was totally the case um that's so cool man that is so cool so so you're still obviously grinding youtube out and things like that so youtube twitch uh two big pillars of your career but i think the other one that we can kind of dive into before we go back into speedrunning is live events so you mentioned a gdq in 2016 what was the next live event that you attended after that uh sgdq 2016 i just kept on going damn yeah GDQ'd, yeah i just it was two two times a year and i was like yep that's that's my two times a year that i'm i'm gonna go do my thing for sure for you sure know, have a little mini vacation but then obviously you know i got my first game in and that was that was sgdq 2016 and i was like huh okay my second time attending the event and i have a run-in but it was at like eight in the morning it was jet set radio not really you know, not really the game or the time slot I expected myself to be in. Yeah. But I was pretty thankful for the opportunity. Regardless, regardless. for sure. Um, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh yeah, that 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 event is also an event I look back fondly on because that was the event where Bok Basoup did Resident Evil 2 OG and Silent Hill 3 back to back. Fire. Uh, oh man. And it was yeah, that was really, really fun. He and I had a blast. That is so sick. Um but yeah, I think GDQ just it, as soon as I went in 2016, like those two events, like that solidified it for me. I just didn't I didn't ever want to miss one. Right. So I kept attending and, you know, obviously 2017, just the third event that I've been to another run, Devil May Cry. And that one was a great time slot. It was massive. It was like, I think it was right after Metal Gear Solid 3. Um. Wow. So and then Silent Hill Four was afterwards, and it was just like a it was just a banging lineup, right? And uh, that I think Devil May Cry twenty seventeen was probably the one run where I 
like early on in my career where it was big. Like I actually got quite a lot of uh, traction from it. Mm-hmm. So and so so that kind of showed me that like wow okay so not only is GDQ like my two times a year like fun vacation to go see friends but also it can actually legitimately help me with my my goal of becoming a full time streamer. Right. Right. So and um and obviously like that's not the the sole reason you do a gdq run the sole reason to do a gdq run is just raise your you know raise money for charity raise awareness for your game to show it off you know be like hey like this is what i or you know my friends and i have worked on for years and i want to show it off and here it is right um but yeah it's just it's no lie it's no lie that gdq can really help you with with streaming and whatnot um so that's i mean that's how it happened with me and i just kept on grinding out games expanding my list and yeah gdq just became such an important thing for me so uh yeah super grateful to pretty much the entire staff yep huge shout out gdq man that is so cool that is so fucking cool man um so one more thing on live events um what would you say is your favorite thing about live events whether you're a viewer or actually competing or anything like that what would be your favorite thing, and what would be one thing that you don't really like? Is it the travel? Is it this? Is it that? Tell us your good and bad. I think, like, the tip, the tippity top, like, the peak of it all is, like, if you actually have made, like, really good friends in the speedrunning space, mm. or just the creator space in general, like, yeah. especially if they live super far away, and you never get to see them, like, that one time a year that you get to see them is, that is the peak. That is the tippity top. Oh, cool. Um, but you know, the the low part, the lowest of the low, it, it usually has to do with like location. Mm. Um, just for me personally, because I am terrible with cold weather. Like this past AGDQ, it was in the negatives some days with winds, and oh, I was I was man. dying going outside. Um, you know, but. The the funny thing is, is that like that tip top peak that I just talked about, mm. if you go outside on your own in that weather, it's the most miserable shit imaginable. But when you have like a group of like five friends with you and you all just get to talk and just hang out, it makes that totally void. Like it's completely worth it. So fucking true. So true. It's it's just worth it if you have a couple of homies with you, and, and it just makes almost any event better, you know what I mean? Like, you could be in some shithole town in the middle of nowhere, but the fact that you get to see your homies always makes it better. So yeah, I think that's a very valid point. That's awesome. I like that a lot. That a lot. Especially if you've already, like, developed, like, this, maybe sometimes even, like, me and Zom never met, and it's yep. been, what, almost three years now? Yep. Like, you already have, like, this such close connection, then it just takes it to the next level, you yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's a very like forever kind of feeling, right? Like once you like make your your online friendships like real, right? Like now it's like really forever, you know, because it's like, oh yeah, I met him, you know. So super cool, man. He's a real person. So yeah, yeah, cool. right, right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, live events, awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so, um, before we get into speedrunning, anybody want to kind of pitch anything? Anybody? Anything? No. Uh, nope. Okay. I just wanted to comment, like, I just think your choice in games is always just top tier. Like, you know, looking through your YouTube, it just like I feel like all the games you play are just so hard hitting. Yeah. It's like you just got like some of the best choices and things to grind. I don't know. I just wanted to point that out really because uh, yeah, so, like uh, uh, even though you know the YouTube only goes back a few years, right? Like it's just it's just filled with like i feel like all the content is just top tier honestly 100 percent. um because even just browsing uh the src list like even all those games like insane list so yeah no for sure i totally agree um and that kind of leads into my next question actually so um let's talk horror games let's talk about indie horror speedruns uh so how did you initially find out about ihs what game initially brought you in here i know what game initially brought you in here but for those who don't know um feel free to tell us your your origin story within um uh indie horror speedrunning uh choo choo charles wait that is, 
You weren't in here for blood wash? I wasn't, no. Oh, yeah, because you didn't turn the... Oh, you didn't... Oh, that's right. It was Choo Choo Charles. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and the funny thing is, is like, um, when I entered uh, the Discord via Choo Choo Charles, I was like, wait a second. I should have probably been here before. <laughs> you were like, wait a minute. You no, know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it was Choo Choo Charles, but like before, before Choo Choo Charles, obviously I had ran some indie horror. Yeah. Um, and like, uh, not all of it is necessarily, you know, stuff that I stuck to. <laughs> and or Blood Wash is a great example. <laughs> blood wash i just banged out in one night and i got the the stupid rng on on the final final boss whatever her name is and i was just like all right i'm done with this game if anybody if anybody beats it like you know fuck it good luck we have, we, have, we have funny stories about that too yeah yeah um <laughs> and i called it like my unbeatable speed run uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. which was like which was totally a meme right 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 uh that was totally uh, the talk of the town for a bit there because everybody was like oh my god did you see that blood wash run so yeah, no, you 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 totally slammed that for sure. It was so funny. That is so cool, man. <laughs> a blood blood wash is actually the reason me and Zom both joined this yeah. server, and that yeah. was world record at the time, and we were both like unbeatable. <laughs> Holy <Skull> shit! <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I gotta watch the vod. Really hard just to just to get that. I was like, he got this day one. What kind of RNG is that? Mm. Yeah, it was it was a real it was so it's funny how it kind of connects, but. Yeah, blood wash. That's that's a funny introduction to Maxi Lobes. Totally. And then later, I remember watching the Black Back for Blood uh, thing, and I was like, "Oh, this is that this is the gentleman who uh, got the unbeatable run." <laughs> Made the connection. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. So blood wash, Choo Choo Charles. What was your initial reaction to Choo Choo Charles? I assume that one wasn't a run that you kind of stuck to, right? Okay, so the funniest thing about Choo Choo Charles <laughs> is that Callist Callisto Protocol had came out like a couple weeks beforehand. Ah, okay. And we were all like, "Yeah, Callisto Protocol, a new a new sci-fi horror game to grind out." And then it was kind of eh. And running it was kind of pain. Mm. And yeah. then Choo Choo Charles came out, and we were like, "All right, whatever, let's just play this." Yeah. Choo Choo Charles ended up being a significantly better speed run. It was like ten times shorter. Yep. And it was a lot of fun it had it had memes it looked dumb it was fun <laughs> uh, it just it had it all it was perfect mm -hmm. for content and and you know dist and i rarely ever get to run a game back to like you know next to each other right uh so he would be on and he'd be grinding it and then he'd end stream and then i'd get on and i'd be grinding it yep and it was this cycle it was perfect it was a perfect cycle between me and him uh, cause like I said, we never get to run games alongside each other. So Choo Choo Charles was super fun. And like, that was the game that made me enter the discord. Let's fucking because go. Because I, I, I needed to know like everything I could right. while I was grinding it. Cause I knew I wasn't going to grind it for too long. Hmm. I spent maybe like, I spent maybe like two, three weeks on it. And then I, and then I kind of just stopped cause I had a lot of other things to work on. Right. But um, yeah, th those those two like three weeks were super super fun. Choo Choo Charles was a huge hit. Like I did not expect that many people to want to run it, but yeah, it was huge. Yeah, people were watching it. it. It had a really good mix of like first like technical hard glitches that not everybody was just gonna hop on and do. Like you had to practice them. It had yeah. like you said the memeiness of it, and it was like kind of in that perfect length of like speed run time where it's like yeah, I could try this a hundred times today you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's true that's huge yeah. um yeah man i just remember that like a couple weeks on twitch and every time i would open twitch because i followed the category um it would just have like almost 10k viewers like under the category like all the time and like the first like five or six were always speed running like that was a really cool time for sure like um Huge shout out to Choo Choo Charles, man. Definitely um, one game we got lucky yeah. getting. Yeah. Sure. Shout out Vac for beating the game like 25 minutes after it came out. Mm -hmm. but... Yep, mm -hmm. you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so another game I kind of wanted to touch on more in the horror aspect is not a game we actually host here at IHS, but I still think it deserves its respect, and uh, it's definitely a very respected game in terms of horror. Uh, 
let's talk granny so um when did you initially get into granny what are your thoughts on granny as a run and uh how did that journey start for you so, i mean i knew of granny right like for years but i never played it yeah and so like i finally bit the bullet and i was like all right i have i have friends who are just vouched by this game so hard i should just play it yep so i played it it took me two nights just to beat it once <laughs> no no and and <laughs> i was getting i was getting chirped on for it you know yeah People are like, brother, it's not even that hard. I'm like, no, it is. It's you so understand? Hard. It really is. <laughs> it definitely is. is crazy. Like, people to down people who put five thousand hours into it are gonna call it easy, but that yeah. is a hard game. It is a hard. Granny's game. got the sauce. She does <laughs> for sure. Um. So yeah, that was my introduction to Granny, and like after I played the first one and beat it like a few times, I was like, you know what? Like, I totally understand why people love this game. Like, it is fun. Yeah. It is legitimately got a fun gameplay loop, despite how simplistic and dumb it is. Um, so I played Granny Chapter Two, and I was like, "Okay, this is more of the same. Yeah. Like this is this is good, but it's getting a little more creative." Yeah. Uh, you know, introducing Grandpa, and then Granny Three was like the you know, the the even more of an expanded experience, and I was like, "Okay, th these three games are fire. Like I I I was wrong. I should have played these way earlier." Um, but like as Granny, as as cool as Granny was, when I watched the speed runs, I was like, "Damn, dude, I don't know if I can do this. Like, this is hard. These people are really good at this game. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I could get to this level, especially any percent. Uh, it was just it was too short for my liking. Like, I didn't want to really do that. I didn't want to do like the whole wall clip thing. It was just Ugh. a little too short for me. Yeah. Um, so, but I but people loved it." people love those runs and it's like still ran so much today like so i i can't deny how you know how big that game really is in terms of speed running but i wanted to do something like different with it so i started incorporating all three games back to back to back into like my marathons that i do every week or try to do every week right um so and you know people liked it and i was like you know what if you guys like it um we'll keep I'll it just, i'll just keep it on yeah, yeah fuck it for sure i'll keep it on we'll, we'll keep doing it we'll have fun with it until it gets old and yeah. lo and behold it did not get old somehow granny the anthology just kept on delivering people loved it and i was like okay well i mean it, it's not get, it's not getting old for me and it's not getting old for you guys Fuck it. So I, i'll submit it for gdq i guess <laughs> and i did <laughs> and looking back on it like after i had done all my submissions and like before the games list came out i you know i was looking at him i was like dude is this gonna be one and done like is this it is this just are all my submissions void because I submitted Granny and it's just too good of a submission? And that was the truth. <laughs> that was the truth. Granny was too powerful. They took a Granny right on the spot. And I was like, wow. Okay, so, and that's like, that's like the best run in terms of entertainment that I think I've ever done a GDQ. Like, it was a blast. I Granny. don't know anybody in the Granny community. <laughs> like, I don't know any of them. I don't I just, know any I of ran, them. I just ran all three Granny games at GDQ, and I don't know any of them. And they probably don't know me, so they right. probably watched that and they were like, "What, what the fuck?" Their yeah, they were they're like, like "No way! This, guy? this is crazy!" <laughs> well, oh my god! Some people are really weird about that. I remember, so we host our marathon every year, and there was something about um, what is that game? Chapter one. Uh, I can't even think of the name right now, but there was a Discord there was like, you cannot submit this game. Oh, we can submit this game because we run it. And I think that's such a weird aspect too. So I think it's cool that you can be outside of the community and still represent it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Poppy's Definitely. Playtime. That's what it was. They were really weird about oh. uh, people outside of the like, community submitting for it. Yeah, it's always funny, right? Um, You always have those like, like, Granny's interesting in the aspect that there's like two communities right there's like the legit runners and then there's like all like the trolls and people who are just there for memes and um i find that like the legit runners are you know you have people like first try and 
you know, Shock and AJ and um there's yeah. a couple of new like overseas runners now that are like super talented. So um yeah, man, interesting community granny is very interesting, but um Yes. I I, oh, I did want to say this. I feel like, and this is kind of not really off topic, but mm. I think it's kind of like abstract. But like the fact that there's no sprinting in the game, I feel like sometimes we pick up these or handy horror speedrun games, and like there's no sprinting, and you immediately kind of count it off. But like, I feel like if there was sprinting in Granny, like you could just sprint around everywhere, grab this, do that. Yeah. It would make it such like a different experience. But I think just the the half in the walk and. And kind of everything has to be a little smooth, you know, grab this and keep your straight line so Granny doesn't catch it, whatever. I feel like it just adds so much flavor to it and that not many games can pull off properly having kind of like the slow movement. Yeah. I don't know. I totally agree with that. I I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, So one more uh, question on the topic of horror games. What is your favorite horror game that you ran? And is there a horror game that you'd like to run? Let us know. Ooh. Any leaks? <laughs> Leak it. Upcoming, let's see. Um, that's such a hard question. I know, I know. If you if you had that's to pick, if, if you had to pick, right? Like you know, right I now. I feel like you know, even though Fear isn't like a full blown horror game, it's like especially as a speed run, it's more of a first person shooter speed run. But mm-hmm. if you were to count that, I would say Fear. Like for Fear, sure, I've I've had such a good time with. It's got oh, it's yeah. got the glitches. It's got the movement uh it's got it's got combat it's got funny mechanics like the ragdoll and stuff and and the red mist clouds that you turn enemies into like it's got it's got flavor it's got a ton of it yep uh and i love that run so i'd probably pick that but there are a couple of other like very notable mentions um like i do think that uh resident evil 7 like back in 2017 like that was incredibly fun um not just for me but for literally anybody yeah who ran horror so the that's, legendary that's, yeah very fond memories with that um obviously resident evil 4 the early days were you know fond memories a lot of the like community members that i met at gdq via re4 uh i yeah definitely have a lot of good memories with them so shout outs to them and Big uh, out to them. yeah i think i think those three mm-hmm. definitely come to mind um the only one i the only other one i can think of is like fatal frame because oh, that's okay. the one game that i've had like the craze <laughs> the craziest rivalry in ah oh. uh, yeah a french french runner named alien he and i traded world record about five or six times oh man um we we basically optimized that game just just me and him just by having that rivalry and like you know shaving off stupid amounts of time every 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 record so yeah those those are all very uh very good mentions that that head to head can really do it sometimes like when you're in that uh rivalry it's like you two are the only people in the world playing a game yeah for sure and (laughs) and, uh, you can really change the game how a game is even like looked at just by having like someone who's on par with you like really pushing each other so i always think that's a cool concept i agree man that's awesome i love that list i love that list so much there's there's some like really rare picks in there too i like that i like that um so moving away from horror for a bit uh let's talk other speedrunners so i was kind of curious and me and the crew were kind of curious who are some of your favorite runners to watch these days who do you get inspired by who are some of your favorite runners in general do you have any um i think like nowadays um i feel like dist is still up there for me big shouts out distortion sure. whenever whenever he puts his mind to a game when he really really wants it insane he'll do it you know it's and he'll, like he'll get good he'll totally. find cool stuff so yep. he's he's definitely up there for sure great watch um yeah he has so much flexibility too he's yeah, like right. this game's yeah. popping people are speed running this game i guess i'm <laughs> learning everything about it fucking Here's only like, up <laughs> to this to that oh man range is crazy yeah that is um yeah it's a great shout i like that shout a lot yeah definitely definitely big shout out to dist um absolutely and then i guess like in terms of like um you know back when i was 
getting into speedrunning at first, like 2015, like I, I'm still friends with like quite a few that inspired me to run. Um, people like Fire Dragon, um, and uh, Trihex, obviously, like the, those are two big names back then. Yep. Um, did they did they inspire me to run Nintendo games? Nah, but I fucking love watching them still. So yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yep. I tried running a Nintendo game once, and I gave up. Intimidating. Intimidating. Yeah, yeah, it is. Super Mario Sunshine. Oh! It had the sauce. It had the sauce, but oh. the GameCube controller certainly does not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, For sure. Some people, some people prefer that shit. They're like, oh, the, the notches and the good. Nah, Fuck like, no, no, absolutely notches. not, man. I couldn't do it, dude. I couldn't. Uh, <clears throat> super tough, that man. That C stick needs to go. <laughs> I personally can't even really speed run on a controller. Like, just I, I feel like I'm so used to like. That's the key. You know, immediate reactions from like where you're looking, what you're doing. Like, I feel like slug. I've always felt sluggish on the controller, and uh, and then going back to a fucking GameCube controller or fucking Nintendo mm -hmm. 64 controller, it just seems yeah. like impossible. Well, actually, uh, that kind of sparks the question. So, Maxi, which do you prefer? Because you've ran games on both inputs. So, do you prefer controller? Do you prefer mouse and key? Do you like both? I definitely think it depends on the game, mm. but I find that I'm more comfortable on mouse and keyboard. Like I, um, I don't because when I play with a controller, I tense up a lot. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. It's, it's a weird habit. It's a yes. weird habit from yes. certain games. Um, For sure. And it messes with my shoulder. A yes. Lot. My shoulders, because I tense up and my shoulders get you know tense. I lock in in like the bad way. <laughs> Fucking you know, spot you're on. Like, you're locking in in the good way, but you're also locking in in the bad way. You're like locked in, but you're so stiff, and you're just ah oh, yes, I know exactly so what you're talking about. You're running your bones creak. You're like, oh, I haven't oh, moved God, in yeah. an hour and a half. Holy yes, shit. It's so <laughs> bad. Um, Mouse and keyboard are definitely more comfortable. Um, but I can I can run games on controller just because that's yeah. where I started. You know. Yep. Manually manually splitting with my space bar with a PS2 controller. <laughs> so sick, man. Yep. Yep. Ah, oh, that sounds terrible. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. I swear it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, well, that's awesome, man. Uh, that's a great list of runners as well. Uh, huge shout out to OGs and uh, Distortion as well. Um, so, kind of a similar question, but something for the new guys out there or anybody who's curious on speedrunning or interested in getting into speedrunning. Uh, do you have any tips for new speedrunners? What would be, you know, three things that you would tell somebody who's, who's new to speedrunning? um I, I guess like the first tip is the one that's very a common question that gets asked is like you know i, I what's a good game to get into speed running with and it's mm. like it's so hard mm -hmm. to answer that question so my my answer is always just like pick like your top 10 favorite games of all time and then just watch them as a speed run and if you like what you see try it out if you don't like trying it out switch to a different one you know, just just pick like a pool of ten games and just go for it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, and like that's just it. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, if I speed run my favorite game, isn't it gonna ruin it?" It's like, no, no, it it won't, mm -hmm. it won't. You'll be okay. You can still enjoy the game casually, most likely. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that's I guess that's the big question that always pops up. The second question, like is usually you know like what platforms should i run these games on because nowadays we're getting complex like mm. we're, we're getting pc ports for old <laughs> games we're getting, yep. you know <laughs> we're getting split leaderboards for different versions You're so right and so people are like oh what platform should i run it's like should i run the fastest should i just get the pc version and it's like well if your pc can handle it i mean like it's we're, we're getting to the pay to win era right now dude it's crazy <laughs> Uh, yes so yes uh, to be honest right now if if someone were to want to get into speed running if they have a really good computer just go with go with pc versions but if you don't have a really good computer and you just by chance have a ps5 just just play it on play it play it on ps5 for sure you're on an even you're on an even playing field you can you know learn from other ps5 runners and it's yep. going to be consistent yep um so that in terms of platform just like work with what you have if you don't have a super good pc and you're the game you, the games you want to run are all like weird compatibility like if you're running like a 2003 pc port and like yeah don't get it on pc then it's just gonna crash and you're gonna be sad yeah 
Um, yeah. Just just stick to something that's consistent, even if it means you have to like buy like a you know, a, like a a Nintendo Wii and a GameCube version of a game. Like just stick to something consistent and yep. find the enjoyment in that. Uh, and then the third thing that I'll say isn't really a question that I get asked often, but it's definitely something I want to stress to a lot of new runners is that sure. when you practice don't just practice an entire run like as if you're new to speed running do yourself a big favor and learn and practice your games in like chunks so like let's say you run a game it's like an hour 15 you should honestly just run 15 minute chunks so like the first 15 minutes of the game learn it run it and then keep doing it over and over until you feel somewhat comfortable with it and then move on to the next 15 minute chunk that's perfect. I would have to totally agree with that because <clears throat> I know in my experience, I am the absolute worst at that. Like, I will pick up a game and I'm like, oh, this is speed runnable. And I'll like learn the first level really good. And then I get onto the second level and I'm like, okay, I'll restart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll see how fast I can do this first level. And I feel like mine is so bass backwards where like I'll just restart a run over and over and over again and then slowly increment through it as like, like so my first half of the run will be god tier like world record pace and then the last half is like i've never even heard of these levels before <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. For real. It's, yeah it's such a bad habit because I, I have no self-control but when i watch people do those little increment like a guy i watch is kluger he's a cod speed run uh cod speed runner for like uh campaigns and stuff and he will you'll see on his youtube he'll upload one level world record another level world record one level world record mm -hmm. and he goes like all the way through it and then the next week you see the whole campaign world record and it's yeah. like just that slow progression mm -hmm. it really pays off super pays off so, yeah that's yeah, that's that's a that. that's a very underrated tip there i'm not gonna lie to you chief for sure yeah yep for sure it is yep definitely um so you heard it here first folks uh listen to the man himself okay so um fantastic tips um but uh just a couple more questions that we had for you here tonight so kind of just to pull back a little bit uh what are some of your plans for 2024 the rest of the year and maybe the future coming up um well i am pretty obligation free from gdq i don't have a game in so i can just go and hang out right um so i don't have anything to really work on uh i'll probably I've been doing a lot of randomizer stuff for Resident Evil 4 lately because Bach cool. Bach and I decided like, yeah, let's do permadeath. Let's do permadeath stuff. So mm -hmm. an RE4 remake, the remake is getting a randomizer soon, so probably That's more of that sick. too. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be super sick. Um I don't know exactly how crazy it gets, but I did see a clip of like the first village siege. And there was like a few chainsaws, a red zealot. Uh, like you know, castle cultists, and you know, one of the the pig guys with the turret arm, and like it was it was crazy, right? And I was like, yeah, I gotta play this as soon as it releases, so I'll definitely do that. But like in the long run, um, I know Silent Hill Two Remake is gonna come out. <clears throat> um, not particularly excited, <laughs> but I think <laughs> it'll be okay. That is good. <laughs> it'll be okay. That is good. <laughs> um. Yeah, right. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to get bloobed. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, but then you know, apart from that, we've got stuff like uh, Crow Country. I know, like that's coming out really soon yep. in like a couple weeks now. Um, that game looks sick. Yep. Uh, we have also got Little Nightmares Three. Oh. Uh, Tormented Souls Two. Okay. Got Hellblade Two. We've got a lot of good stuff coming this year. I was about to say, it's a crazy um, lineup. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that, I mean, I don't really have any plans apart from, like, just the, the new little horror releases here and there. I know Chilla's Arts just keeps going, you know. Yeah. Tor Torture Star and Puppet Combo are still going. Yep. They're, they always <laughs> have new stuff to play. P people um, under Puppet Combo, we, we could say that. Yeah, yeah. Puppet yeah, Combo yeah. just post shitty memes on Twitter at this, this moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's all they do that's we're starved they do. of games over here man <laughs> um 
but yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, so one thing I wanted to touch on before we sign off and things like that, and before we gave you the floor, is actually your music. So tell us a little bit about your second half of your career. Tell us a little bit about your music history, because you mentioned way earlier at the start of the interview that you had tried to pursue music, but it didn't really pan out. What happened there? Where are you at now? What's going on? Uh, yeah, music was like the first real thing that I, you know, wanted to pursue out of high school because I felt like I was decent at it. Yeah. Um, but obviously the hardest thing to do when it comes to making a band is actually keeping it together. That's the hardest thing. 100%. And that was the, the big, that was the big problem I had. I, I, I think my first band that I made, we were called Helios, and we had a full seven-song EP ready to record. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was like taking, I don't, you guys know the band Volumes? Mm, maybe if I heard it, maybe, not. maybe if I heard a track. So, um, they were like a pretty big inspiration for us, and so we sounded like pretty similar to them. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they were, they were booming in popularity, and we were we were right there like we could have recorded that ep and got it out and we could have had something we could have had the ball rolling but my guitarist just up and quit randomly and because he was the only guitarist he was mm. the only one who knew how to play all the parts and so me and the bassist were sitting there like that's uh not good is that it then like <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that it like is is he gonna be willing to like give the guitar parts to somebody else <laughs> right and <clears throat> he just wasn't like he just didn't care and i was like wow shit yikes and like it was a it was a good seven song set list it was yeah. like solid you know we played it live and people liked it and i was like all right cool so you know in terms of like the start like it was rough and then you know after that i made a band called somnium and we were it's kind of similar progressive metal like more kind of dream theater dream theater meets like modern heavy sure yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and we were making some really cool stuff but again I don't know why it's always the guitarists, but the Dude. guitarist was like, all right, I, I don't know if I can justify doing this at the moment. It's too much of a time sink for me. And I've got like, I'm still in school and I'm like, oh God, okay. Ugh. All right. Here we go. So, so that, that felt the same thing. And then, you know, I found uh, a couple of other people to play music with. We, I had like a cover band on the side um, and another band uh, called uh, the Midnight Society. And we were kind of, we were kind of like alt rock and we maybe could have done something but to be honest the again it's, it's a crazy curse with me but the guitarist was a, he was a little too old and he just wasn't very responsible with his drinking at shows so oh, every show no. every show we played was just not a very good indication of how good we really were yeah um oh, so and that made me quit i was like nah dude i'm, I'm done with this like yeah. If we if we can't actually play the shit live, like we'll never get anywhere. Yep. Um. So I moved on and I joined a band called the Dylan Fur Band, which was literally just Dylan Fur. And he <laughs> big shots on Dylan, bro. Yeah. He he was the bassist. He was the guitarist. He programmed the drums and he also did the singing and the keyboard. And I was like, okay, this guy's a one man band, and yep. all he doesn't have is a drummer. And he was looking for one, so I did a tryout. I learned a couple of his songs and and he put me up to the challenge and he accepted me and brought me in and I was like sick okay now I have somebody who's on like the same you know the same page as me yeah somebody who's committed somebody right. who actually did all of this by himself before I even joined um refreshing and I essentially wanted to be his drummer for as long as I could but the problem is, is that when we made a full band, um, we, we had a rhythm guitarist, a bassist, me and Dylan. Mm -hmm. And when we made that, we ended up playing some really cool shows. Like we played with the contortionist. We played with Polyphia. Uh, we played with intervals. Um, oh, Affiance, shit. King OK. Giants. OK. Uh, we, were, Damn. we had a show lined up to play with Chon. We didn't end up playing it, though, because we couldn't get to San Diego. Uh, we also had a show lined up to play for Animals as Leaders and Periphery on their tour, and the venue that we were going to play at shut down, like, two months beforehand. Rip. Rip the key club. Damn. Damn. Um, 
so yeah so we had like a lot of good stuff lined up and we were making impressions um like these bands we played with were like very positive and assured us that like we sounded good and that we could definitely branch out and, and make it somewhere especially like if we wanted to tour with yeah. any of them like they were they were interested in like bringing us on and we were like wow this is huge mm -hmm. uh but that is that is the point where like the nasty like keeping the band together curse happens where um you know our rhythm guitarist was very he was very enthusiastic but our bassist wasn't mm. we feel like he was not really fit for the part so like we asked we kept on asking him to like step up his game you know practice the parts he he didn't show up to rehearsals sometimes and it was it was a huge bummer and we were like dude you got to take this seriously like we have a chance yep and so he ended up quitting because we were pressuring him too much and the bassist and the rhythm guitarist were like best friends and the rhythm guitarist was like well if he's gonna go i'm gonna go oh god oh um, god brother. dude oh he's brutal so the one thing I picked up from this is like don't trust a guitarist of any sort. Yeah, literally. Holy moly. <laughs> Jeez, man. So where are you at now with music? Um because I had uh, oh, hold uh up, wait a second, my audio is going weird. Oh. Pausing. Uh-oh. Quick little pauser. Everybody else good? Yeah, Back? I'm yeah. Okay. I'm good. Someone snipe that bot in the uh Twitch oh. chat. Oh shit. We got a bot, let's go. <laughs> we got a bot, wow. let's go. Difficult difficulties, hold on. No, you're good, you're all good. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Take your time. Um, okay, there we go. Not you guys, sorry. Oh. Excellent, okay. Um, I was going to say, I can imagine how, like, uh, keeping a band together would be hard because, like, I feel like some people probably do get into it, like, oh, it's a little garage band, I like music, and then yeah. it might, like, tick over to that point where it starts to get semi-serious. Like, you're doing, like, openings for things, and it's still kind of, like, in that mid range of like not being so serious, and then you have like this chance, and then you realize you're like, oh, like so we we gotta be on point, or we're not gonna be here at all. Right. And yeah, I can understand how keeping that all together and having f four or five or however many people on the same page at once is, yeah, I can see how that could be hard. Yeah, yeah, it's a very it's a very team oriented environment, if you will. So yeah, no, like you definitely got to be locked in for sure. So um where are you at now with music because we had some time uh before the show so i went and checked out uh your latest release and i was highly impressed and i was like what the fuck like what are we doing here so obviously streaming in um your content career is number one but uh again where are you at now with music like are you still actively creating uh things like that yeah the 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 whole idea of like having you know obviously content creation be my full-time thing was as we talked about earlier kind of like it shot up so fast that it kind of became priority number one over music absolutely had to and i ended up having to uh because you know dylan and i couldn't you know figure out how to keep a band together <laughs> right uh, i just i switched to that being the priority and he was he, he and i definitely had like that disappointing talk of like yeah. yeah i i can't i can't keep doing this because we can't keep a band together dude it's i gotta pursue something else you know while i have while i have the time and the chance to yep um mm -hmm. so he was understanding and like so in terms of nowadays i just got a full recording set up like uh like a year and a half back let's go um so i've got a fully mic'd up drum kit i've got my interface and my my uh my um my preamp so I I can't stream the drums because for some weird reason OBS doesn't like my setup, but ah. I can record it and I yeah. do want to put up covers on YouTube as as soon as I can. It's a bit of a tricky process with like multiple cameras and like editing it editing up and like having yeah. it all line up and look good and you know beyond that actually doing a full good take of the song. Yep. Um so yeah, I've definitely I I've committed to that now and i do want to get that rolling sometime this year mm. um but i've got multiple things you know multiple songs you know i've got songs from north lane periphery um sith away pliny um you know some older school stuff like you know slipknot incubus um a bunch of different songs i can cover 
right. cover a wide range. Uh, even even songs from like video games, I, I have lined up. I got some stuff from Alan Wake uh, to Devil May Cry. That would be crazy. That would actually be That's so crazy. Jams, oh man, um, I love that. I do. I do find myself like you know you'd be venturing down the YouTube rabbit hole because sometimes when you're just gaming and watching stuff, I always find myself somewhere around like a drum cover every once in a while, right? And it's just popped off for some reason. I bet some of those older. Uh, Video game ones could definitely like. Yeah, people love you know, those. People love those. Yeah, people do love them, especially uh, if it it does look nice and you have the different camera angles and you're really. I feel like people love the passion, right? Like if you're really into it, you know what I'm saying? Like loving oh, yeah. the music, people love that. Mm -hmm. so. Well, That's especially exciting. especially now because there's not as much pressure with all bands and other members and this that and a third. Like you have your full time career now, so now you can actually go and create for fun and go and actually do shit you want to do. You know. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's exactly how I looked at it. I was like, you know what? I I, I need a tax write off. I'm just gonna commit. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Definitely. So I just I got all the mics all at once. Absolutely fucking oh, yeah. legendary. Went just went in and I was like, damn, all right, I got it now. Now I just gotta figure out how to use it all. Right. No, that's awesome. That is so fucking cool, man. Um We'll definitely link your uh latest EP in the description because uh it's gas and you should all go check it out. But um, outside of that, I think that wraps up pretty much everything. That was a fantastic story to end off the show. Um, let's give some shout outs and let's give the floor to Maxi. Uh, anything you wanted to promote, anything you wanted to let the community know about or anything like that, or you wanted to just shout out some heads, feel free to uh, uh, take some time. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I haven't been in the Discord for that long, but it's, it's super, super active. Um, it's actually very impressive like how organized things are in there so you guys do a really good job um appreciate that there's definitely a, an absolute metric fuck ton of indie horror speedrunning <laughs> going on now nowadays compared to like back <laughs> yep. when i started that's for sure yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. like it, so even though like all of the cool like big games you know like the resident evils and the silent hills and, and all that stuff you know the clock towers and 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 yeah. the grannies you know all the all the big ones but like the the small ones sometimes are super dope like perfect example is choo choo charles and even though that did kind of blow up at first like it's not like it was a huge game right it would just ended up getting a huge amount of love and support because it's mm -hmm. silly and stupid mm -hmm. um but yeah that's the you know definitely shout outs just just indie horror creators in general like for a sure. lot of good developers have come yep. up over the years and they are like back in like 2016 2017 i kind of feel like indie horror was not in a good spot no it no, just was not sure. in a good spot and you know that's the that's like the silent hills pt effect of just this is a house and you're gonna walk through it and you're gonna like it you know? <laughs> you're gonna like this um, i swear and like everybody was like oh shit i guess i do like it and it's like no no you're blinded to the to the to the the bad things in this you know this is the, not a working formula we got to break out and now you know 20 i think 2020 to like 2024 has been like a really good four years of just indie horror developers doing good Yep. Like they're doing really good now. They're making cool stuff. Like, I mean, an example of a game I, I talked about earlier, Crow Country, mm -hmm. that comes out in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, check that out because that might end up being a cool run. Um, and it looks like a cool game. So it does. It does. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. Check it. Check uh, it out. Definitely. Uh, we'll definitely link the trailer in the description as well if anybody wants to go uh, show some love. Uh, but apart from that, I guess. Uh, I don't really, I don't really have that many shout outs. Shouts um, out the parents, man. Shouts out the family. You no, know, shout out, shout out the parents for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. Big ups. <laughs> big ups, big ups to the, to the, to the folks. parents. Yep, definitely. Dude, can I make one note? I think he hit the fucking nail on the head with that Silent Hill PT thing. Yes. Because, because the game didn't come out and then everyone thought that they're like, oh, we could just make a fucking hallway with some scary <laughs> shit and like because they captured that good environment and like the horror aspect so well that everyone thought they could do it and it did it fucking it dumbed down games for a good half second there like, mm -hmm. oh yeah it yeah. was mm -hmm. it was dog i just wanted to elaborate on that because i i felt like he hit that on the fucking head i agree i definitely agree um 
So yeah, shouts out everybody mentioned here, of course, um, and of course, huge shouts out Maxi. Maxi, where can the people find you if they want to watch you live and they want to go check out your YouTube, your Twitter? What's your handles, man? Uh, yeah, just twitch.tv slash Maxi Lobes, youtube.com slash Maxi Lobes, and my Twitter is the same. I'm just Maxi Lobes on everything. I'm I'm the one and only. The one and only. Uh, Let's uh, go. I love that, know, man. Yeah. And go just support add. his fucking music. Yeah, go. Yes, yes. <laughs> fucking do that. Please do that. Um, but yeah, with that said, man, uh, that's going to do it for the Indie Horror Speed Speedruns podcast episode eight. I'm your host, Sam Slays. Huge shout out to Maxi for coming on and taking some time to chat with us. Huge shout out to Vac and Plez. Uh, and of course, make sure you stream all the episodes, anchor.fm slash Indie Horror Speedruns. You can find pretty much the whole archive up there. And of course, this will be uploaded on YouTube. So make sure you check the description. Go show Maxi some love. And we'll see you next time. Deuces. Peace, 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 peace.